It is an honor to be here. Shout out to the worship team. Clap for the worship team. These guys, you guys are unbelievable. And if I could keep a keyboard player to play with me, you're going to make me sound mad spiritual, my brother. Clap for the keyboard player making me sound better than I really am. Turn with me. If you have a Bible, go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. We're going to jump in in just a moment. It is awesome to be at this conference. Shout out to Elevation Youth. If you're proud to be a part of Elevation Youth, make some noise. And now make some noise on the chat. It is, a, it is an honor to be here. And shout out to your youth pastors. Does anybody love Pastor Tim? I don't know what kind of coffee or Red Bull this man is drinking, but he is pure energy. And thank you, man. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your creativity. Thank you for risking it all for the next generation. We salute you tonight. We honor you. Come on, let's clap and give honor to these amazing youth pastors right here. Y'all are healing the game, and we appreciate you. We honor you. Anybody love your pastors, Pastor Stephen and Holly Furtick? My God, it just does not get any better. The last time I was in Charlotte, I was here in Charlotte for Pastor Stephen's 40th birthday. And um, the, he's just such an unbelievable person, leader, preacher, author, communicator, friend. He's just songwriter. And um, we just we salute you, sir. We honor you. We thank you so much for your life and who you are and what you've built is just unbelievable. And the way that God is using you is just incredible. Let's clap one more time for Pastor Stephen and really give him honor. People are standing up here. I think you should stand up in your house and just give honor what honor is due in Jesus name. Amen. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Chad Beach in Spanish. That's Chad Beach. And uh, I live in Los Angeles, California. I'm a married man. I am happily married for 11 years. I have a beautiful wife at home named Julia. We have four children together. We have two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, and eight. We have one girl, three boys. Can you show a photo? Look at my, this is my beautiful family right there. And um, that's my daughter, Georgia, in the wheelchair. We have a special needs daughter. And if you don't know our story, our daughter, uh, when she was born, her brain never formed. For whatever reason, she has smooth brain. Her brain never developed. So she can't, she's never walked, she's never talked, she's never crawled, she's never rolled over. She gets all of her, uh, her meals through her stomach. And the doctor said she'd only live this long, but anybody believe that God has the, has the last say? Anybody believe in a greater position? Come on, I know this is the youth conference, but I know there's faith with young people. So somebody thank God for my daughter Georgia tonight. So that's a living miracle right there. She is proof that doctors do not have the last say. I don't know what the doctor has said over your life or somebody has said over your life, but it ain't over until God says it's over. Amen? And so you, you can be sick. Man, I'm just, I'm excited. I, by the way, we, we in LA, we don't get to do church. We get to do church with camera people. So I'm excited to be here tonight. But um, uh, I'm really excited also. Last thing, I have a brand new book coming out. And no, I'm not going to sell it to you, but I will give you a free chapter. Text the word people to the phone number 55444. That's two fives, three fours. Text word people to that number and we'll send you a free chapter if you'd like. That's the last thing I got to say, okay? You there, 1 Corinthians chapter 13? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to read a scripture to you and then I will explain what the writer was intending to say, okay? So let me read the scripture and then I'll just tell you what's happening because we, we read the verses and people are like, uh, I don't know what you're really talking about. But let me just read the scripture and then I'll explain to you uh, what he's talking about. Last time for the keyboard player. Let's thank him. You're amazing, man. Thank you, brother. Don't go too far now. Don't, don't abandon me now. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then we shall see face to face. Let me just pause right there. Anybody excited for heaven? Let's get a little bit louder. Anybody excited for heaven? Like this world is not our home. You realize you're not a citizen of this planet. You are destined to a greater place. And anything the world has to offer pales in comparison to what we are about to experience. Okay, so then we'll see him face to face. Uh, now I know in part, then I shall fully know. Even as I am right now fully known, God knows everything about you. We're going to land on this verse, verse 13. And now these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. 
but the greatest of these is love. If you don't know nothing about the Bible, this is really cool. A guy named Paul is writing these scriptures. Paul's like a church planner. Like he can go to like Orlando and Charlotte and Toronto, much like Pastor Stephen, and start churches and they just take off. So he would always write letters to like the different campuses and be like, hey, I want you to, to grow in this. I want you to understand this. In the previous chapter, chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, which is just a letter, he writes to this church that he started, and he writes to them and says in chapter 12, there are gifts from God, spiritual gifts. I want to encourage every young person, God, this conference wants to fill you with his spirit. Maybe you didn't know this, but you are born of the spirit, you are full of the spirit, and you have gifts of the spirit. Let me say it again. You are born of the Spirit. You are full of the Spirit. And you got gifts of the Spirit. Oh, somebody say amen. So he's going off on gifts. He's like, y'all are gifted. Y'all are gifted from the Spirit. In chapter 13, he continues, and he's like, but listen, there ain't nothing worse than somebody that's gifted that doesn't have love. You ever be at school and you see somebody that's really into themselves? You know, you go through school and you're like, this somebody, somebody's feeling themselves, feeling their following or feeling them outfit or they just, they're into themselves. He's like, no, 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 no. Church people cannot be like that. He's like, you can have gifts, but gifts will not remain. Gifts will not last forever. The only thing that will last on this earth and in heaven are three things, faith, hope, and love. Put it in the chat. Faith hope, and love. I want everybody to say it right here at Elevation at the campus. Everybody say, faith, hope, and love. He said, listen, don't build your life on gifts. Gifts will fade away. You're gifting, by the way. Some of you are gifted creatively. Some of you are gifted songwriters or, or, or video editors or gifted with math, gifted with, with social skills. Your gift will not last forever. The only thing that will last forever is faith. What was the second one? Oh, it is hope. Sorry, I got, I'm getting old. I'm 40. I'm 42. What's the last? Oh, love. Faith hope, and love. I want to preach a message right down the title tonight. It's called, You Can Cancel Everything But This. You can cancel everything but this. I don't know what it's like where you're streaming in from, but I live in LA and everything is canceled. They can, they're canceling. We got the notification this, this last week that they are canceling school in LA this school year coming up. I haven't cried that hard in a long time. I am a homeschool parent once again. I was like, no, we're going we're gonna to send these kids to their grandmothers. I cannot do this. They canceled Coachella. I was kind of happy that they canceled Coachella because every time they cancel Coachella, it's good for the church. People come on Sunday. Usually Coachella's on Easter weekend. We have bad Easters. I was glad they canceled Coachella, okay? But they canceling everything, sport and event. They canceled March Madness. They canceled the Masters. They're canceling all kinds of stuff. Listen, you can cancel everything but this. You cannot cancel faith. You cannot cancel hope. You cannot cancel love. I saw this great commercial. Anybody appreciate a good commercial? Like when a good, com good commercial comes on, you're like, you know what? Good job. Not very often we see one of those. I want to applaud and celebrate the creative team that made that commercial. I saw a fantastic commercial the other day. It was like, it, it was like a graduation ceremony, like via Zoom. And they're like, you know, graduations are canceled. And it was like a birthday party, like via Zoom, like birthday parties aren't canceled. I'm thinking in my head, like people are tired of Zoom. Okay. It's like, this is not fun for everybody. Then it's like a baby and like saying first words and like first words aren't canceled. And we live in a society and a culture that is aware things are getting canceled left and right. I want to just give you hope for your life. There are three things that will never be canceled not here nor there. It is faith in God, hope in God, and the love of God. Come on, give them a praise right here. Come on, give them a praise if you're thankful. You can cancel everything but this. Come on, let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you are awesome. We thank you that you are good. We thank you that you are a kind, loving, and gracious God. Tonight we ask, open up our eyes so we can really see you. Open up our ears so we can really hear you. If this is the only thing that remains, God, help us as young people to build our life, not on our gifts, 
not on our talents, but on that which will last forever. God, thank you for your word. Thank you that it's a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. Thank you that you sent your word to revive us and you sent your word to heal us. God, we are going to devour your word because they are literally life to our soul. In Jesus' name, and everybody said together, come on, clap one more time if you're grateful for it. All right. I want you to take those three thoughts, faith, hope, and love, and just go with me to a story in the Bible. Now, there's a story in, in, in the book of John about Jesus going to Samaria. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus had to go through Samaria. So I want to preach to some people tonight. You're like, I don't want to go through 2020. I don't want to go through this season. I don't want to address some things in my life. No, no. What you're going through right now, you have to go through it. Jesus had to go to Samaria. By the way, Samaritans were the worst of the worst. They were the lowest of the lowest. And some people didn't believe that the Samaritans should have a shot at the gospel. But it says Jesus had to go through Samaria. I want to encourage some people tonight. You're going like, I want to go around this thing. I want to go over this thing. I want to go. I don't want, want to go through this thing. No, maybe you need to go through 2020. Maybe this year is appointed by heaven saying we're going to deal with some issues. There's some insecurity. There's some ego. There's some things in your life. There's some hidden sin that we got to address. Remember, whatever gets revealed must get healed. And so there's some things that you got to go through because the Holy Spirit is revealing some things, not so that you can point them out and tell them how bad you are. We'll leave Instagram comments to that. No, the Holy Spirit has brought things to light because he's like, I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. I want to touch that area. I want to bring light to that area. We're not going to let you deal with the future until you go through what you need to go through. So Jesus had to go through Samaria. When he gets to Samaria, he goes to a well, but before he does, he tells his guys, his disciples, um, y'all go into the town and give me a subway. Okay, y'all got to laugh. Okay, we're going to have some fun or not. I hear there's still $5, even during COVID-19. I'm, I'm hungry. I'm famished. Great word. Go get me some food. And I'll stay here. Jesus is getting rid of some guys that are not going to understand what he's about to do. I just want to encourage somebody. There's some friends you have that don't understand why you're streaming into this conference. There's some people in your world that you got to get, listen, you got to get some separation for your preparation because God's about to do some things in your life and through your life that no eye has seen and no ear has heard. Somebody give God some praise if you're like, I got to kick some people out. I got to get rid of some folks. There's some, there's some negative people. There's some critical people. There's some naysayers. There's some people that I need just for a season, not forever, just for right now, for me to go through what I got to go through, for me to do what I'm supposed to do. I need y'all to get out of my life. I need, I need to mute some folks on Instagram. Oh, hello. I need to unfollow some folks on TikTok. Who am I preaching to? Jesus had to go through Samaria and he had to get rid of some guys because, they, listen, not everybody in your life is going to understand when you start serving God. I'll never forget, I was 16 years old when I fully got saved, like saved, saved. Well, I'm a pastor's kid, grew up in church, 16 years old. I'm at the Promise Keepers, April 26, 1996. I'm in the kingdom with 65,000 other men. We are singing a hymn to God, and I finally then, at 16, said, God, I will serve you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, and my strength. My youth group had 30 people in it at the time. I went back to my, to my church. I went back to my house, and I said, I'm about to start a revival in this mug. I had to get rid of some friends for me to walk in my calling. Remember, you got to become who you're supposed to become so you can do what you're supposed to do. Come on, somebody give him some praise tonight. And so, so, so I, I said to one buddy, you know, we really can't hang out like we, we've been hanging out. Why? How come? Well, that, that kind of says it all right there. And, and I'm just, it's not you. <laughs> you ever break up with somebody? It's not you. It's me. <laughs> And Jesus is like, y'all got to go this way because I need to talk to this woman at the well. She's working at the well. She's, she's getting drinks. She's getting drinks for Jesus. And Jesus, um, what I love about Jesus is he baits her into a conversation. He's like, hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah, good to see you. People skills. 
Um, he's like, um, can, can I get a drink? And um, he's just baiting her into a conversation because he's going somewhere. Maybe it was a graphic that led you here tonight. Maybe somebody shared a post that led you here tonight. Maybe it's somebody's story, but you've been baited here by Jesus. He says to the woman at the well, can, can I get a drink? It's, it's amazing. We'll explain a little bit later, but a well is sitting on a well. <laughs> She has nothing to offer him. He has everything to offer her, but yet still he baits her and says, can I get a drink? Long story short, they go into conversation and he's like, hey, why don't you go, go tell your husband about what I'm talking about, the good news of Jesus? Why don't you go tell your husband? And she's like, oh, you ever talk to somebody and they're embarrassed about you know, what, where they're at in life and so they look at the ground? Tell, tell sign you did something bad. Look at the ground. The one at the, at the well, she looks at the ground and he's like, no, 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 just go get your husband and tell him to come here. And she's like, ah, uh, I don't have a husband. He's like, you're right. You've had five husbands and the sixth man that you're with right now that you're living with is not even your husband. It's amazing because this is the sixth man in her life. The biblical number for six is man. And yet here is the seventh man, Jesus, who biblical number for seven is completion. Jesus is here as the seventh man to bring fullness and completion into her life. So he says to her, can I get a drink? And she's like, ah, and they have this conversation and he reads her mail. He, he tells her everything about her. Can I just ask you as a young person, please let your spirituality be attractive. Please serve God in such a way that people want to follow you. Jesus didn't look at the woman well and is like, it is me, perfection, the Messiah. I am going to give you a word of knowledge, 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 knowledge. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. I will give it to you now. No, he's just like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You are living with a guy. He's the sixth guy. Your spirituality in 2020 needs to be so attractive that your school looks at you and says, I don't know what it is about you, but you got real joy. I don't know what it is about you, but you're a non-anxious presence. I don't know what it is about you, but you accept others just where they are. I don't know what it is about you, but you live life really well. I don't know what it is about you, but you treat people with kindness and respect. I don't know what it is about you, but you're not just against racism. You're anti-racist. I don't know what it is about you, but I'm all about what you're doing. Tell me more. So, so Jesus, he gives her a word of knowledge. He doesn't call it a word of knowledge. And this girl is floored. I, I just, please, just together, let's use our imagination. I wonder the condition of this woman pre-Jesus. I, I wonder, you ever talk to yourself? Years ago, I read a book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. And, and, and I wonder what her self-talk sounded like before Jesus. I wonder if she was sitting there thinking, there's nothing left of me. There, there, there's nothing. I, I got nothing in, in my virtue. I've got nothing in my body. I've got, I've got just, I've been used and abused and left and, 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 and betrayed. And I've, and I've gone through so, there's nothing that remains of me. But I wonder what her conversation looked post Jesus. Because the Bible says she ran back to her village and she told everybody about a man that changed her life. She told everybody, there is, I'll tell you what remains of me. Three things are left. I got faith now. I've got hope now. And I've got love now. Come on, somebody praise him. If you're thanking God that pre this conference, you might not have felt that good. But during this conference, God did something in you. And you're walking away saying, I've got more faith, more hope, and more love. Give him a shout tonight. If you're grateful that God shows up right where you are, knows what you're doing, and still loves you enough to help help you get through it. I'm going to give you three things to write down tonight, young person. Write down the first thought. I love this. Here's what she's saying, and here's what we're saying. I have faith in a big God. Woo, I love this thought, because I'm preaching at a faith church tonight. I got faith in a really big God. I don't know. Listen, let me just tell some young people. I don't know how big your problems are, but they're not bigger than God. God is bigger. God is better. God is stronger. Listen, listen. Stop telling God how big your mountains are. Start telling your mountains how big your God is. Somebody thank him. He's the God that splits Red Seas. He's the God that takes out Goliath. He's the God that can help somebody in a fiery furnace. Is anybody thankful we serve a big God? Yes, 
Oh, I love this. Read this in 1 Peter. Watch what it says, 1 Peter 1. This is what's going on right now. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy. Even though lately you've had to put up with grief of many trials, but these only reveal the sterling core of your faith which is far more valuable than gold that perishes. For even gold is refined. Your authentic faith. I just want to encourage you. God is developing authentic faith. God is developing sincere faith. I don't know if you've ever been around fake or phony. I don't know if you've ever been around. Like, listen, I didn't grow up with money. I grew up with, I'm a poor preacher's kid. We had no money. I didn't have boxes of cereal till college. When I was growing up, we got bags of cereal. Okay, all y'all cereal up here in the top shelf, we be down here getting them fake rice krispies, okay? I don't know what you little cocoa puffs, we had cocoa roos, okay? I was preaching in Australia a couple years ago, and this guy had some Yeezys on. I was like, bro, way to go. Like, those are cool. He's like, yeah, mate, yeah, they're fake. I'm like, okay, just a heads up. Nobody's asking you to say that. You can just pretend like they're real. God is developing in you an authentic faith. How do we know if something's real when it's tested? There are three types of faith in your life. There's crazy faith. When you believe for something that's wild, I believe a generation will be, will, will serve my God. I believe for signs and wonders. I believe that God will use me beyond my wildest dreams. I believe that God will touch the earth with the gospel. I believe that we'll write songs that will touch the world. I believe for something crazy. Come on, are there any crazy faith young people that are believing for something that if you said it out loud, everybody'd be like, you too crazy. Come on, give them a crazy faith praise. If you're thankful, faith is a gift. There's, there's crazy faith and there's desperate faith. Desperate faith is like the woman that grabs the hem of his garment. De- desperate faith is like the, bo- the man that came and said, my daughter is sick at home. But I've, I've had desperate faith with my daughter, Georgia. There's crazy faith and there's desperate faith. But I'm talking to somebody tonight that's got tested faith. Like tested, like that's what's going on in 2020. He's testing you. He's testing your belief. Faith is belief, trust, and confidence. It is belief, trust, and confidence. He's just saying, do you believe in me? Do you trust me? Is your confidence in me? Oh, I just got to tell you a story. There's this, I know you don't, might, maybe you're brand new to faith. This story is unbelievable. It's, a guy, it's three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, you know you're wrong with some men. They're like, yo, Shadrach, get over here. Yeah, only if Abednego comes. <laughs> Bible jokes. It's a long story short. There's this king, Nebuchadnezzar, and he puts out this decree, and he's like, listen, anybody that does not bow down to the false gods that I put out there in the universe, we're going to throw them in the fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're like, yeah, right, elevation youth. We don't bow down to no fake god." Keep your little fake God. I serve the real God. So like, no disrespect, sir, but I found faith. He found me at a well when I was dry and weary and broken and bruised. I don't need your fake stuff. The world will try and sell you something that's cheap. It will give you empty promises and sin will make you stay longer than you ever want to stay. It'll make you pay more than you ever want to pay. And they're like, we're not bowing down. We are not bowing down to this fake God. Watch what it says here in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty hand. But. Even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. I need some people at this conference to transfer over to an even if faith. Even if I don't get out of COVID-19, even if my school doesn't get saved, even if my boyfriend doesn't understand what I'm about to do. Somebody thank God I'm about to walk into an even if faith. If you test me, even if my, my, my mom doesn't get healed, even if my daughter doesn't get healed, even if we don't see it, I'll still believe it. Give them some praise tonight. If you're thinking, I've got faith in a really big God. 
Re re remember, if, 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 if you've got a, a, a little God, you've got really big problems. But, but if you've got a really big God, you've got really little problems. And so, and so, and so the first one that, that she walks back to her city with, and she's like, I got faith. I got faith. I, you know, you know what? I really believe out of this conference, we're going to get contagious faith. Like, like, like we, like we just came out the fire. Like it's contagious. It's like, it's like, it's like all over your Instagram account. It's all over. It's all over your wall on your phone. It's just, it's contagious faith. Anybody down for some contagious faith? So, so, so number one, I got faith in a big God right down. Number two, I have hope in better days ahead. Cause, cause when she was sitting at the well, all hope was lost. When, when she was sitting at the well, she, she did not feel hopeful whatsoever. But once the gospel came in, hope was restored. Hope was renewed. I, I just want to remind you, faith is the builder, but hope is the architect. Your faith is going to build your life, but hope is what allows you to dream for your life. Like my, my parents built a house a few years ago and they hired an architect. And when they got the architect to the home, to our old house, they, they sat down and they started to make plans and they said, our kitchen's going to be here and I want to have an island right here. And this is the patio. And they drew up plans for you. I want to tell you the Holy Spirit is downloading some hope for you. He's saying, you know what? I, I believe this is your geography. Some of you are getting your occupation. Some of you are getting your future right now. He's, he's just allowing you to dream for a moment. What could the future look like? You're not cursed by your generation. You're not cursed by your last name. Something's on you. Something's in you. Hope is the dream, but faith will build it daily. Any hopeful people, anybody have hope in a better day? Oh, I love this. Look at, look, look at this in, 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 in Romans 4, verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Look at Psalm 33, 18. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. The eyes of the Lord are on anybody that says, God, I hope in you. Hope, by definition, is confident expectation. Like, y'all remember when the Golden State Warriors were good? They ain't no more, thank God. But do you remember when it was like Steph Curry with the shot boy? You remember? And I'll never forget the first time I went to Oracle Arena. And that, he's from Charlotte. Steph, I'll never forget the first time he shot a three and I was there. He catches the ball and he starts to shoot it. He just went to the motion. I promise you, the whole arena stood up. And the whole arena stood up like, yeah, already went in. And when this joker shot it, it was like everybody knew it was going to go in. He knew it was going to go in. So when it went in, they were just like, yeah, that's right. That's our boy, Steph Curry, with the shot. I, I, I want you to get some hope that when God's about to do something, even before you see it, you already stand to your feet and say, I've got confident expectation that this is about to happen. Somebody praise him tonight like you've got faith and you've got hope. Oh, I love that. But the eyes of the Lord are searching for those whose hope is in his unfailing love, his unfailing love. He'll never quit. Even when you're at the well, even when you're dry and you've made bad decisions, even when you're living in sin and you've got disgust in your life, he doesn't stay away from you. Remember when you're in your worst place, God does his best stuff. When, listen, when everybody's walking out of your life, we serve the God that's walking into your life. You might feel like I'm at the well. I'm bruised and broken and tired and weary. Here comes Jesus. Y'all got to get Away. I need to get with this 14 year old. I need to get with this 16 year old to tell them I'm obsessed with you. I'm in love with you. Anybody thankful for grace tonight? I got big faith. I got faith. I got faith in a big God. I got crazy faith. I've got desperate faith, but I'm, 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 I'm tested right now. And in, 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 in the test, I'm going to come out of 2020 with a little bit more authentic faith. I'm half Mexican. I didn't say full. I said half. I'm half Mexican, okay? Not Mexican, Mexican, okay? I'm half. I hate fake tortillas. I love me them authentic joints. And so I got faith and I got hope. I, I know it doesn't look good right now. I, I, I know it doesn't look okay, but I, you know what's crazy? I've never seen the righteous forsaken. 
And so my hope is in God because it feels like every time Goliaths and lion's dens and fiery furnace show up, he shows up and he shows off. And so I'm kind of just, I know he's just got the ball because I've given him my request, but I'm already to my feet and I know he's going to come through. So I got, I got faith in a big God. I have hope in better days ahead. Write down number three. I have a love for Jesus and my neighbors. Keyboard player, you can, you can come play and just be in the background with me because I just, we're going to land the plane in just a moment. I have a love for Jesus and my neighbors. You got to just put that in your phone somewhere. I have a love for Jesus and my neighbors. You know, the only Christian I don't like is the Christian. It's like, I love God, but I hate people. The Bible says in 1 John 4, you have never seen God if you hate your brother. And, and so let's just talk about racism. Racism is a sin. And racism at its core is a gospel issue. Because you can't receive the good news of Jesus and hate somebody else. Because the more he loves you, the more you love others. That's why he said these are the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So I, I walked away from this well with faith and hope. And I started just loving. You ever meet somebody that just loves people? And they just walk around. They're like, oh my gosh, you're my favorite. You're my favorite. People get mad at me all the time, Pastor Tim. And they're like, how come you say everybody's your favorite? This person's your favorite. That person's your favorite. It's like, don't hate on me because I love people and you don't. Just, just, you cannot love God and hate others. The more he loves you and washes you and heals you and forgives you and accepts you and redeems you and opens his arm. It's like, how could I not? I love you, man. Love you. We need to be a church and a generation just says, love you. Love you, mean it. Sometimes people are so insecure, you got to leave the mean it, mean it on it. Love you, mean it. Because listen, there are more people for you than against you. And don't let the devil lie to you. And don't let some comment get in your head. And don't let somebody that doesn't like you at school or doesn't like you at church get into your head. You need something bigger in your spirit. I have a love for Jesus and a love for my neighbors. When the love of God overwhelms your life, you'll never be the same. The love of God, listen, there's, this is why I don't like arrogant Christianity. Arrogant Christianity is like, ooh, 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 you got what I need. Ooh, sit down, I'll tell you. No, 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 no. Opinions will not change the world. The love of God will change the world. We don't need to hear what you've got to say. We need to hear what God has to say. The love of God will change the world. The love of God will change the world. And the love of God, the love of God, the love of God drove him to Samaria. What? Yeah, because like he loves people that everybody else thought that they don't deserve a chance. They should not be at church. They don't dress like us, act like us, talk like us. They don't have the same bank account. They don't, they, no, 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 no. They, the gospel's not for them. He's like, no, no, no. I came to Samaria because of love. And I came to the well because of love. And I got all these people at Subway because of love. I got to clear some space and have a conversation because love made him do it. Love made him get on a cross. Love didn't make him just go to a well. Love made him get on a cross and said, Father, Father, forgive these people, for they know not what they do. Is there anybody thankful tonight that the love of God is going to change your life and change this world? We need love. We need love. We don't need opinions. We don't need criticism. We need love. We need love, acceptance, and forgiveness. We need the love of Jesus. Jesus is the solution. Jesus is the answer. He's all we have, all we need. I can't take my gifts with me. I can't take talents. I got no followers in heaven. All I've got is my faith. All I've got is hope. All I've got is love. You can cancel everything but this. I don't know what you're building your life on right now. It can't be your last name. It can't be how good you are at sports or, or schoolwork. It cannot be any other thing but faith, hope, and love. You can cancel all of it. All of it will fade. Listen, the grass may wither and the flower may fade, but the word of the Lord will last 
for. She's had a well. Like, I don't know if you got a job yet. My junior year of high school, I worked at Burger King. And you, you, you know, when you work at a job, you have in between time. In between time is when your mind wanders. So maybe she had served somebody a drink and had a few minutes before Jesus. What was her thinking pre Jesus? That first marriage was tough. Three really got me. Five. Um, and this guy I'm with right now, he got stinky breath. I don't know if I should stay with him. He don't got a job. I'm, this well is paying for his, his Xbox. Here comes Jesus. What I love about the love of God, he, he never announces himself before he comes. He never gives you a heads up warning. Hey, tomorrow wow. night, wow. Wednesday, I am going to change you forever. Just a heads up, it'll be via YouTube. It'll be on Facebook, you'll never be the same. And I'm gonna offer you living water. And you have nothing to give me, but I have everything to give you. And I'm going to sit down with you. I know everything about you, and I'm obsessed with you. I love you just the way you are. I just love you way too much to leave you that way. And I'm about to give you. And when you walk away, you will walk away with more faith and more hope and more love than you ever bargained for, dreamed for, prayed for, asked for. Come on, somebody thank him. He's breaking curses tonight. Come on, stand to your feet. I just want to read this, this quote. They're going to put it on the screen so that everybody can read along. I found this quote from C.S. Lewis. He's a writer. He's an awesome author. I just love the way he put it. Just follow along on the screen. There is no safe investment. To love it all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to no one, not even to an animal. Wrap it carefully round with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the cos a casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. The alternati alternative to tragedy, or at least to the risk of tragedy, is damnation. The only place outside of heaven where you can be perfectly safe from all the dangers and perturbations of love is hell. And when I read that, I thought to myself, God, if I get broken loving people, who cares? If I, if I got to be vulnerable, who cares? Lord, I'll throw my heart over the line. Come on, is there any young people in this generation that will say, God, give me faith tonight. God, give me hope tonight. Lord, fill me with love. Come on, lift your hands in your bedroom. Lift your hands in your living room. Lift your hands at Elevation Church. God, we just thank you right now. We thank you that you are good. We thank you that you are loving. We thank you that you show up at the well of our brokenness. God, thank you that you speak to us. We need you tonight in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, let's worship God tonight. We believe in the youth. Hey, yo. Well, that was just a tiny little snippet. A little nibble. A little taste of youth. A nugget. Yes, just a little bit. If you want to see some more, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss anything else. Yes, comment, like this, like share it. So many options, but all apply to you.